Hey guys, welcome to the channel today. Today's video is gonna be a little different. We're gonna do a little walk around and a little farm tour to show you parts of our farm if you're new to our channel where you haven't seen what we do daily. So we're gonna talk about all the animals we have. We're gonna show you parts of the farm that you haven't seen and hopefully you enjoy this video. Thank you so much again for all you new subscribers. We really appreciate you. We hope that you ask questions about some of the ways we raise animals today and let us know what you think about this video and we'll show you more farming if you choose to like that footage. So today's video is gonna be a good one. We're gonna do a little walk around. You hear the animals going crazy. Uh, should be a good video today, guys. And it starts right now. stars come to shine when it's dark from so far away show us where we are so we will start kind of at the back of the property or what we have the front drive you've seen us video around the pig forest so an idea of kind of where we're at if you've seen our video with our cows you know uh, we have a church at the very far point of our property which is right here and this is where those hay fields are where we get our hay now our house is way back that way we'll make our way to it over the next few minutes and that's where we have our chickens our rabbits but we have the entrance right here and that comes off a main highway about a, uh, about a tenth of a mile that way so we're about i don't know maybe a half a mile off the actual main highway but we come through and this is where one of our bee apiaries are is right here and this is two cattle fields and this is a cattle field. Now we raise our cows in what we call paddocks. So that way we're rotating always. They're never on ground longer than just a few days. And then they maneuver. So again, we're not having to treat our animals. We're making sure they're getting the best quality grass. And also hay when we start moving around this time of year. But our goal is never for them to sit over their own manure for a long period of time. So once you leave those fields, you get to where we have the pig forest and what we call the pine pasture or what we call the forest pasture or civvy pasture eat underneath these pine trees a lot of times this is devoted to our cows now when we first started we had pigs and sheep in here because they cleaned underneath and made the forest clean where cows could get in there and access different hedges and different things they may like to forage on but other than that it's just a little field that we come through that the cows enjoy it goes kind of deep behind all these pine as well so they'll stay there a few days too now our pig forest we filmed in front of our pig forest you've seen our pig forest uh, we have two kinds of pigs and today what we're actually doing is we're working on a water we got to fix one of our waterers we have a video on our waters and how we raise our pigs check that out in the playlist of pigs but we use these nets to train our youngest set of pigs to get used to rotation our goal is rotating our animals so our animals do not get sick and we don't have to treat them we don't want any antibiotics or any kind of medicine going in our animals if we can help it we raise two kinds of pigs and we've talked about this a little bit but these are the newest little piglets that we have and they're now about mid-size we do not raise in barns however so they're being trained in barns on deep bedding for just a few days and a few weeks depending on what we're training so they take them out of here and they will learn this pig fence right here so they'll learn how to get used to the waterer that we have which is this guy right here and then also the pig fence now those pigs in there look a little different than your typical big commercial style hogs these are american guinea hogs I'm sorry, you're gonna to have to listen to the rooster because he never shuts up. These are heritage breed American guinea hogs. American guinea hogs are lard hogs. Their goal is to grow and be a good homestead pig. They're more docile. However, these are not what you call your bacon hogs or even your pork chop hogs. These are more you think of uh, pulled pork, you think of sausage, but mostly lard. This is where we get our fat and our oil for our farm and for our family to harvest and render down. And that's what we use as our primary fat to cook anything that we want. Lard makes everything better. So we believe in lard, but so that's what these guys are. That's why they tend to be shorter, stubby, or fatter. Now we do get pork chops off of them and their meat is higher quality because they, they grow slower. It's just a great hog to have. But that is the American guinea hog. They're getting trained in our barn right now and then they'll come out and start working the grounds and we'll show you where we're actually getting them to in just a few moments. These are our commercial hogs. These are these two mama pigs and then big red laying down behind them. We raise these guys for breeders to sell to other families but also to raise for our true pork chops our bacons and what we consider 
what we mostly eat from the supermarket. So these are conventional hogs. These are Yorkshire, Berkshire crosses. Uh, the Yorkshire, which is like a blue butt Yorkshire, that's the wider pink pigs that you typically would see. That coloration that you see in these hogs are pretty much what the Berkshire or the Hampshire breed is. We crossed them because we like the sizing. We like the length of what some of these pigs grow out. And we've been real happy that we're on about our third or fourth generation of these pigs and really like them. We also have a lot of roosters hanging out with the pigs. <laughs> we don't, you only need a certain amount of roosters. And you know, roosters are not really easy to give or sell. So we tend to let them just forage and they can kind of hang out in the forest. They can eat uh, ticks and other bugs and also some of the pig feed. But our goal is to make sure they can live off the land. Why is that important? If they learn to live off the land and all of a sudden feed gets hard to get to, we have chicken being raised with our pig that needs no feeding whatsoever because they learn to supplement with what we're giving them and also forage for the majority of their feed. So we give them all the old spit hay. So all the hay that we don't let the sheep or cow eat come in here, they'll deep bed themselves in the forest. We maneuver them around the forest and pretty much they keep it clean. Look how clean underneath all those trees are. That's simply because hogs are in here. It just rained like three to four inches. We had terrible storms, but pigs do not necessarily um, just waller in mud and look gross all day. It's meant to be where pigs are not in waller and mud all day. You can give them a little waller here and there, but we want them to be clean. We want them in the forest. We want them working and that's helping their muscles grow. That's helping them forage and that's helping them be all natural and be more of a pig instead of just laying in slop all day. Where we're at right past the pig forest is our big gardens. Now, what we have growing right now, it is winter, so we do not have any major crops on this side of the farm. We're trying to make this ground better quality. And as we've talked in most videos, we don't do conventional fertilizing. So this is where we move pigs and chickens. So right now we're growing cover crops. All this area here is white clover and red clover. That's some greens right here, some lagoons growing over here, along with some more vetch growing. So we're trying to make these areas grow better. This is some greens that are just kind of finishing out. This is some greens trying to finish out. And our goal is to make these gardens uh, get better nitrogen loads by what we're planting as cover crops. Now, supplemental feeding. We will work the pigs and even some of the roosters right here and they will work in those nets and in those chicken tractors that we use over this area and they will spread their manure. They will eat the forage feed. So we are feeding our grounds and we are feeding our animals. So that is true regenerative act. Now our pond that y'all see in a lot of the videos, it's right here. It's about a seven acre pond or lake. Uh, we tend to have a lot of bass, a lot of perch. Uh, we love fishing. It's fun. Aiden is, is, he could fish every day if you allowed him to but it's good for us because we have food there. We have good quality fish that we have had for years there. And our goal is to keep that pond up for as long as we're here at this property, because that is another form of food that we do not have to do anything such as feeding for. They live of course off the pond. And unless we catch good quality fish, we always throw them back. So that way we keep our pond full of good fish. Before we move on, we've got to fix this water. Maybe it's just like me. That project is finished. On to the rest Why of the farm. Why does the rain always keep on pouring down when it's gray outside? It really makes me wonder. We come to the end of the the Sibby pasture or the pine thicket pasture or the pine forest, whatever you want to call it. We call it all those names. Uh, we get to the other side of the pond here. Uh, we have this is one of our chicken tractors. We'll actually use and put on the gardens. And that is actually how we feed our gardens is with these animals. So we'll have the chickens go over it. We'll have the pigs go over it with their nets and it will help feed our gardens for next season. Cause this is where we plant peas and corn and uh, hoping to get better gardens each and every year. So this is one of our barns. Our barn here is really for an animal barn. We have 
uh, animals always rotating. However, when it comes to storms, we have bad storms here. We've not finished this barn. We've got the fronts on it and now it's holding hay because it was winter season. But these will be stalls and we'll build stalls right here to where we can put the sheep, the pig, uh, maybe calves, uh, some of the, the smaller animals that tend to struggle with some of the bad weathers we have. Now the cattle, they don't tend to struggle. The bigger sheep don't tend to struggle. And of course the bigger pigs don't. However, piglets, lambs, calves, uh, this would be a good barn for them. So you see we've got some lumber here. It's not quite finished. Uh, this is the, the barn. We wanted the old traditional kind of horse barn look. We have another barn that holds a lot of the other hay. And then we also have a feed shop. So uh, out, outbuildings are very good, especially when you own farms. Uh, we have the cattle trailers. We have our trailer that we haul. <laughs> we have to go places because we have like 45 members of our family. Not really. We have six kids. So it gets a little hectic. So we carry this big trailer if we're going somewhere. If we're speaking or doing any kind of events on permaculture, farming, anything like that, uh, this is what we use. Cattle trailer, we're actually hooking this cattle trailer up today. We're gonna be picking up a new dairy mama. Uh, so we, we're gonna go pick her up in this little cattle trailer today. First hooking to the big one back here that if we're hauling several cattle. Is it uh, cold outside? Yeah. It's pretty chilly, huh? Um. Now we are on the other side of the lake. Now I film a lot here because this is my favorite spot. It's just a beautiful piece right on the other side of the dam. You see there's the, there's the barn right there that we just talked about that has the hay. But this is where mostly our sheep kind of hang out. They work all the way around the whole lake. Sheep for us is, we enjoy it, it's the supplemental meat for sure but they're we just love them they're beautiful they help keep the grounds up because they don't um they they spread their manure of course and they can eat behind the cows with no issues of uh, any kind of bacteria any kind of worms any kind of issues that cross from a cow to sheep so we raise them together uh, places we don't want to bush hog places that tends to be harder to get to when it comes to cutting grass or putting cows there that's where the sheep come in so these beautiful sheep, this is one of our best mamas. This is actually one of our oldest mamas. Her name's Daisy. Uh, the big guy in the back is Mr. Trump. And then of course we have a little weather that is growing out right now. And then the other mama over there behind is gonna be a younger mama behind Trump. Both of those are set to lamb just any uh, any week or day now. But uh, you hanging out with Daddy again? Uh -huh. Awesome. The lake is up, it's actually up by about 10 to 15 foot we had some major rains and tornadoes the last few days but hey we thankfully we were safe but if you if you kind of go back through where we're at there's our house there's that driveway with all the cows on it there's the barn and the that's the pine forest behind it the pig forest is all right there and that you can barely see it but way back there is where that church sits way behind all those woods back to those fields so we're we're a pretty good piece off the main area where we were but just want to give you a feel of where we're at on our farm. Uh, this area behind here, we fish a lot of this area. Uh, this again is a bass and perch pond, uh, so it does really good. We've had a lot of alligators. We've got some videos of some alligators that we've had in this, this lake, uh, but we can just fish all the way around it. Uh, we keep a lot of that area kind of secluded for deer hunting, and uh, there's not a lot of animals back there on any part of the farm other than just trees. The, the sheep are rotated in uh, nets like uh, the, ca the pigs are, just a bigger version or this smart fence now i've done a whole video on how we raise our animals dealing with playlists this is a smart fence if you're interested in that we have a gallagher affiliate link this is the best way of raising animals we also have a gallagher charger on it but it is some fine quality management for animals especially if you're looking to do things more holistic uh, more maneuvering around i mean look at the ground this has been deep bedded so for instance you see all the old grass and it, it insulates the ground to have new grass. And the quality of the ground is how your animals make it and survive. So our, we don't have to feed the sheep. We don't even have to feed the cows other than when we start supplementing hay. But other than that, they have great quality ground because we do the management we do. So look at these beautiful, these beautiful sheep. And these are 
Katahdin sheep, that is what we raised. We've really enjoyed them. Uh, we've had some bad stints where uh, we had one get hurt in a storm. So that's why we put the barn in a year ago because uh, two years ago we had one get hurt. And so we've realized it's better to have a barn to be able to utilize it when we have these big storms. And when we don't, we allow them to be who they're supposed to be, as natural as they're supposed to be, without us having to implement medicines and things like that. We want these animals to be raised the best way and the most natural way possible. So back by the house before we show you some of the garden area i want to show you our dairy herd so we have a meat herd of beef and then we have our dairy herd we raised jerseys uh, we had a bad situation the other day we had uh, you, we had fall calving and we had uh, five healthy mama cows and five healthy babies on our farm it's a blessing uh, there's nothing better than coming outside and seeing that you had a healthy mama and a healthy baby well, our last delivery was one of our dairy mamas, our oldest member of our farm, which was uh, our dairy cow, Allie, if you've watched us for a long time. Uh, and this is her baby. We did pictures of her baby. Her baby's right there. That's, uh, that's our other Jersey mama. But what happened is she had problems in delivery and we, we, did not, we were not able to save her. So we lost one of our dairy mamas, which was really hard for us, especially me, because uh, I milk them daily and uh, she's a, a sweetheart. She was our staple of our farm. Uh, but I wanna show you kind of where we work our cattle, but also where we milk. It, you don't need a lot when it comes to family milk cows and uh, working your cattle. Build something that is feasible for you if you are interested in this. Uh, we have a, a stanchion right here. Uh, we just rebuilt some of these walls, but this is where we milk every morning. We have electrical out here where we can run our, our milk pump. And really that's not more for us as, as it is when we have to go somewhere and someone has to come in and help. Uh, it's hard to hand milk a cow if you're not used to that. So we, I've hand milked cows here, which is perfect. We're covered from the rains. If we lose power, it's no big deal. But we also have power here where we can run a milk pump. Uh, this is our little corral that if we need to work the cows, if we need to check if they're pregnant, if we need to do any kind of uh, any kind of uh, troubleshooting on any cow, uh, if we have to, if we have to tag them or we have to cut our our bull calves to make them steers, all that happens right here. We have again videos on us building all this. It's really a big part of our farm is our dairy our dairy herd. Uh, you see that this mom is a great nurse cow. This is actually the one of the babies of Allie that we lost but he she has actually come and and took this this little baby calf and now this baby calf is a part of the herd and she's able to nurse both those babies there her original baby but also she has adopted this other little bull calf so we're thankful for that we have a little heifer this is another baby of Allie's and she's growing up she's gonna be a great milk cow like her mama was and uh, that's one good thing. Even though we lost the main uh, matriarch of the dairy herd, we have all her babies and all her grandbabies are still on the farm, still producing. And as much as we'll miss her, uh, her legacy will live on with uh, those mamas. So again, it's winter, so our gardens are not just crazy busy, but this is where we have our arbors, where we grow pupas on here, cucumbers on here. We've even grown some kind of squashes all that kind of grows there right now these are onion patches and garlic patches uh, we don't use most of it if you see this little grass area that's another cover crop that we're trying out that is rape and vetch it's a, just a different variety of it so we're going to see if it really helps grow because this is where our corn was last year another little area of corn that we tried an heirloom version actually this is uh some okra that finished up and we were able to harvest seeds off of it uh, again right here we have our main garden that we grow our peas and beans in uh, and we we cover we use these tarps and this is just like an agrabon or a poly tarp this helps us keep uh, good earthworms roaming around keep the ground good and warm with the sun hitting it and it keeps it where uh, all that chop and drop that we had from last year is really making our gardens grow better uh, all down this what we call our gas line and pipeline that's an area where we raise cattle right now in the very bottom that's actually where we deer hunt. We've got that planted in ryegrass and that's where we harvest deer uh, during the winter season. So we're actually hunting today, or Aiden will actually hunt today. This is our other big barn. This is where most of our hay is. We have a, another set of hay over there. We go through about 75 bales of hay 
uh, on average we keep a little extra just for safety that we can feed animals if we ever needed to or we could sell to neighbors if they need some so this is our main hay barn uh, right here we're at the back side of our greenhouse our feed shop the chickens uh, we had those shown in the last video we have a lot of our our main garden staples too that grow right by the house uh, what we consider permaculture zone one because what we do is we'll if it's cold and things like that and we need to do a little bit work uh, we have our broccoli right there we have a lot of our lettuce right there we can run out grab it cut it get it ready to eat and harvest and our big gardens are really focused on spring and summer growth other than some overflow of the onions and garlic keep a topsoil that we uh, a local compost that we get mixed some hardwood mulch that we have here this is our main bee apiary uh, it is really cold however the sun is making the bees come out because they've not had a pretty sunny day in a long time so we've got our bee houses here uh, we will not go back in them till early spring because we want to leave what honey they have for food also they sealed it off with their propolis so we want to make sure we keep them insulated this is a well house we actually made a video on our well pump and also on a hand well pump uh, this is the the cool f600 we have a video talking about our old truck this is a dump bed truck that we found great deal on we've done some work to it and it has become a staple to our farm one of our strawberry beds we we keep weed barrier around our strawberry beds and around a lot of our crops we live in the south where it's humid all the time so we always have grass growing this is our caterpillar tunnel right now we have some broccoli that's pretty much finishing up some gorgeous lettuce that is doing great see here's some florets that are still growing this is the main stalk that we had there's a floret growing right there but this is where we grow mostly anything in the early spring or cool temperatures such as fall and winter it's pretty hot to grow in uh, the spring and summer late spring and summer uh, some more broccoli this is a different kind of broccoli heirloom that we started we've got some garlic garlic brussels sprouts we've got some carrots started here along with some kale some arugula more garlic and this is some different forms of lettuce and spinaches we're going to kind of finish this video up we've got uh in inside this little shed on the side of the house is where we come in with our generators we keep it where we can lock it up also keep it out of the storms but that's what can run our house that's where we can also put our solar generator of need but that's where our propane generator stays again chicken this is our chicken yard uh, we will be actually building a new chicken yard very very soon we brood our own chickens we've done a video on the chickens and a whole playlist about our chickens so check those out if you're interested in chickens vivega we are uh, affiliated with this company with these raised beds if you don't want to build wood raised beds this is a way to go love these things we have a video on that as well some more things that we have growing next to the smaller greenhouse which has become really more of our tool shed for our gardens more garlic you can tell misty really likes garlic <laughs> so we've got garlic growing some more strawberries uh, right next to our smoker is our feed house we uh, keep about three to four thousand pounds of feed in this barn gosh i hate to show you this barn because this barn is probably pretty nasty <laughs> or messy excuse me let's see we also keep our chicken butchering stuff in here uh, just some random stuff so i'll show you this but look at all the feed and we have videos on this feed that we're using we have videos talking about the alfalfa we use uh, some chicken butchering stuff over here so you're seeing just about every part of our farm that's not the prettiest parts of the farm for sure got some grow bags full of some raspberry still some other things that we have kind of out in the sun inside our greenhouse we have tons of stuff growing in here this is misty's baby uh, right here we have uh, some ginger some turmeric growing we have a lime tree that we just harvest our limes out ate some awesome lime key lime pie that misty made uh, over on top here these are some of the uh, pears that misty actually got from seeds let it go through cold stratification and now they are growing little pear trees these are seed sweet potatoes that we will have to start new vines next year next summer uh, we've got some mullen growing right here uh, this is a, a tangerine or an orange tree a kumquat tree these are some tomatoes that we have for the spring season but we started them early so we can have some early tomatoes as it gets closer in warmer temperatures uh, just some more shrubs we've got some pineapples growing over here uh, a lot of herbs 
it's a lot it's almost a lot to take in but it's a beautiful beautiful greenhouse if you're interested in any of our greenhouses and what misty's got growing or seed saving check out our greenhouse playlist it is excellent for you to understand how to grow food misty does a phenomenal job right here we've got some lettuce that is starting this is our no-till what we call our kitchen cottage garden tons of garlic growing uh, some more strawberries we've got herbs mullein got some lemongrass finishing up there some more lettuce some more garlic these are some roses where we harvest rose hips off of them uh, our big pile of blueberry bushes now you've seen me film in the outdoor kitchen this is our outdoor kitchen and where we can harvest utilize the sinks or cooking without electricity uh, it's on propane uh, again our wonderful smoker we've got videos on the smokehouse curing out bacon or curing out hams this is how we do it indirect uh, all wood no gas there's the big direct heat and then we have the fatso grill doing indirect heat you see some of the old pecan that we have and man when it gets cold and around the christmas season actually today we're laying out some meat because we're going to start getting ready to do a major smoke on a lot of meat so some hams oh, we got a brisket and some pork loin we're gonna throw on for christmas There's nothing like it. it's gonna be yummy up this is some elderberry that we have foraged misty and i have some videos on elderberry especially her going to get some of these out in our woods and then we brought them back to our home and now we can raise our own elderberry to uh, give us medicinal herbs right here and a superfood right here at our home all right guys hope you enjoyed this video uh, we wanted you to see some of the animals that we're raising we wanted you to see some of our farm and we wanted you to tour so when you see us in the videos you kind of know where we're at uh, if you're interested in more farm videos or interested in certain parts of the farm let us know uh, we'll we've done you know pantry tours and we've done farm tours but we hadn't done one in a while especially for some of you new viewers we wanted you to see uh, the benefits and the beauty of what we're trying to do when we raise our animals in a holistic regenerative style way as they provide for us we want to provide the best life for them too guys thank you so much for watching god bless happy homestead y'all yeah, it makes me wonder